Okay. So hello everyone. Thank you for joining us today for the DOAJ indexing of OJS journals webinar. My name is Arud Shazami and I'm the community engagement and outreach librarian for the public knowledge project. Um, and with my colleague, Patricia Mangahes, client services manager, we're going to outline the steps OJS journals can take to comply with the DOAJ application requirements. Specifically, my colleague Patricia will guide attendees through how to represent and link to information in OJS that will be relevant for your DOAJ inclusion and indexing application. So before we begin, um, I'm going to give a brief overview of the Public Knowledge Project and OJS by extension and also the directory of open access journals. Then I'll share the importance of applying to be indexed, <clears throat> excuse me, by the DOAJ before turning it over to Patricia for the demonstration portion of the presentation. So the first few slides that I'm gonna cover are relevant to those who may not be using OJS, whereas the second part of the presentation and the bulk of the presentation with the demonstration will be specific to those that use OJS. So the Public Knowledge Project is a core facility of Simon Fraser University. PKP builds scholarly publishing workflows and platforms for the publication of peer-reviewed journals and books, as well as for posting scholarly preprints. The subject of today's presentation and the software PKP is perhaps best known for is Open Journal Systems or OJS. PKP has cultivated a diverse international community that benefits from its publishing software and research around scholarly communication. So more than 30,000 journals in 150 countries use OJS to publish research in more than 60 languages, making it the most widely used scholarly publishing software in the world, benefiting academic communities as well as the wider public. A recent study found that 60% of OA Diamond journals use OJS. So diamond meaning those that do not charge fees to readers or authors. PKP also has publishing services uh, that does provide hosting and support services for its clients. For our community, PKP maintains a support forum where community members can seek and offer support to one another. Um, and also we, we maintain a documentation or docs hub which includes documentation for the practical implementation and use of our platforms, as well as best practices in scholarly communications. So our presentation today is actually based on a lot of this documentation, as well as documentation from the DOAJ, that, and the documentation from PKP can be found in the Docs Hub. Of particular note is a guide titled DOAJ Application Guide for OJS Journals, which is in the process of being updated um, and will be released shortly. You can, however, find the current version of this guide online and available now, and I'll be sharing links to those in, um, in future parts of our presentation. The Directory of Open Access Journals, or the DOAJ, is a unique and extensive index of diverse open access journals from around the world. DOAJ contains a vast collection of over 19,000 open access journals. More than 13,000 journals list on the DOAJ do not charge article processing ch uh, charges or APCs, making them more accessible to the wider public. The DOAJ index encompasses a wealth of knowledge with over 8 million articles representing a global perspective, including journals from over 130 countries, also in diverse languages, with journals available in over 80 languages. So the DOAJ lists five main reasons to apply to be indexed. And the first is reputation and prominence. The DOAJ is a respected community-driven project that serves open access communities and is known for advocating for their best practices. Indexing enhances the reputation and visibility of your journal, standards and best practices. The criteria for inclusion are widely accepted in scholarly publishing. Funding and compliance. 
So indexing in the DOAJ ensures adherence to national and international funding requirements and global initiatives like Plan S. Additionally, if your research is grant funded, there's a growing expectation for publications to be openly accessible. Many governments and national bodies now mandate that journal indexing in an open access directory is a requirement and funders and institutions are increasingly relying on the DOAJ as a reference to determine funding allocations for journals and authors. And this is especially true for um, our colleagues in Europe, as well as in some cases in North America as well and across the globe. But it would be of note to sort of um, do some research and see what, what the requirements are where, where you are since we're speaking to our global audience today. Discoverability and visibility. The DOAJ metadata is freely available, improving search engine visibility. Supplying metadata enhances exposure through aggregators and in research portals. And of course, the international coverage with which both uh, PKP and DOAJ uh, take very seriously. So by indexing your journal with the DOAJ, you gain access to a comprehensive directory that includes open access journals from diverse countries. With a global editorial team offering local support, your journals reach extents worldwide. Indexing with the DOAJ not only enhances inclusivity, but also enhances the international visibility of your journal. So not being indexed by the DOAJ means missing out on the most comprehensive registries of open access journals that researchers frequently seek out to find content to read and journals to publish in. So applying for indexation not only improves your journal, but also opens up opportunities for increased visibility and recognition. So before proceeding with the online application, it is recommended to assess your journal's readiness based on the following criteria. And the DOAJ makes available a PDF version of the application. It's important to note that, it, that you are not to submit the PDF itself as the application. The application is fully online and you have to register to apply. Um, but the PDF is a really good reference point to go through all of the questions questions to assess where you are in the process. So you must comply with DOJ's open access policy and maintain a website with a dedicated URL and homepage. A journal must also have a confirmed journal title and ISSN, so the International Standard Serial Number, and implement quality control processes that include an editorial board, peer review, and restrictions on publishing papers by um, members of the editorial board, board members, or reviewers. Journals must clearly state copyright and licensing terms for articles and meet minimal publishing requirements, uh, which might mean a minimum of, uh, of, sorry, of five research articles within the past year, or for newly launched journals or recently converted OA journals, sometimes referred to as flipped journals. Um, you must have a publishing history of over a year or at least 10 open access research articles being published. There are also additional criteria for certain types of journals, including student run journals or conference proceeding journals, and information on these can be found on the DOAJ's application guide, uh, which is an incredibly important document, which I will post in the chat. I will post uh, many of these again at the end of of today's presentation. But enough of hearing me, I am going to pass it on to my colleague Patricia for the main event. I'm going to hand it off um, and mute myself. We will take questions at the end of the presentation. Thank you so much. Thanks. All right, thanks so much, Arush. Um, so for this section of our presentation, I'm gonna highlight points from, as Arush mentioned, um, our documentation, as well as uh, DOA's own uh, best practices guide. Um, I'm going to go over where in your OJS installation you can put the various information that's going to be required as part of your application. Also gonna uh, highlight examples of accepted journals and how they have chosen to display um, the required information. Um, for this demonstration, I am going to be using um, a version of OJS, uh, 
so OGIS 3.3. So if you're using a different version, um, the navigation and pages might be slightly different. Right. So as Arush mentioned, in your DOAJ application, you'll be asked to provide various links um, that point to key requested information shown on the screen here. The great news is if you are using OJS, a good portion of this requested information will be displayed on your journal homepage when you enter the information in the designated fields of your journal settings. And most of the information that you'll need to present can be entered within your main journal settings. So I'm going to start off with the journal and publisher information. So the journal and publisher information uh, should be entered in your journal settings tab within your masshead. So if you're on OJS 3.3, it's going to be in your journal. Uh, masshead and contact tab is going to be the two key areas you're going to be entering that information in. So the journal title that you input here must match the what you have on your application and on your ISSN. If there is a translated title, this should be entered as an alternative alternative title in the designated locale field. Um, so for example, if I have a multilingual English and French journal, um, the French translation of my journal will be should be entered in this field here. Um, the publisher information should be entered in two key places. Uh, so your publishing details here, as well as your contact information in the contact tab. Um, information about ownership and the management of your journal should be clearly indicated on your journal's website. Um, if a journal is affiliated with a society, institution, or sponsor, links to their website should be provided uh, where available. So some journals may choose to include external links from to their affiliated body from their navigation page or embedded as links in the journal description. Um, or um, embedded as logos on the sidebar. Um, in your about journal description, which you'll find at the very bottom, um, you could include the following key information, uh, such as your open access statement, pol statement or policy, publication schedule, target readership, practices and policies, as you will likely be displaying a lot of information here, we would recommend utilizing headers to keep that information organized. You can also choose to display some of this information um, on your sidebar if your theme allows, as well as your footer. This is an example here uh, where a journal has their sponsors on the sidebar. Um, next, another key information that you'd want to input in your journal description is going to be your copyright. While OJS does allow you to assign your copyright um, in your journal's distribution setting, um, it will only display this in your published article, um, and it doesn't actually get displayed um, anywhere in your pages. Um, so it's important to include this in your journal description. Um, as well, the copyright holder should ideally be displayed on the full text of all your published articles, such as your HTML and your PDF. Oh, moving on to your aims and scopes, um, this should also be included um, in your about journal description, um, and it could also be included in your author guidelines. Um, next, we have the publication fees. Uh, journals should state whether or not they charge any related fees to the publication of an article. This could include article processing fee, editing charges, color charges, um, submission, or supplementary charges. Um, you would like, you should include whether or not you're going to be charging for this now or in the future. Um, as well as if you are offering and accepting waivers, um, it should outline instructions, information on how to submit to these and who would be eligible. Um, and even if you are not um, charging article processing fee, it would be great to state that explicitly, um, as you can see with the example we have on the screen. 
Um, moving on to your editorial information. Um, so this will be entered in your journal settings um, just above your journal description. There's a specific spot here for your editorial team. Um, Um, so the journal must have an editor and an editorial board. Um, the editorial board should have at least five editors with the appropriate qualification and expertise. Um, as I mentioned, this can be entered in the editorial, editorial yeah, team field yeah. of your yeah. journal. Um, you should provide full names and the affiliation of uh, your editors, as well as the contact information for your editorial office. Um, and this information can be entered in your contact tab here under the mailing address. Um, it is also recommended that board members should not all come from the same institution. Um, and some journals may choose to create a separate editorial board page if they're looking to add images, uh, full bios, or have a larger editorial team um, that does not fit within the text field that OJS provides. Um, next, we have your peer review policy. Um, it is important that you display the journal that the journal has a quality control process, also known as peer review, for published material. Um, you will need to indicate the type um, and detail reviews, details of the peer review process, sorry, um, who will be involved, any key policies around your procedure. Um, each article should have at least two independent reviewers. Journals may choose to provide a summary um, on their about the journal page and provide um, additional in information in subsequent pages, such as your information for authors um, and information for reviewers, if you choose. Um, so here's one a journal that does have the summary in their about journal and specific pages for their authors and reviewers. Um, and then moving on to your author instructions. Um, instructions for, for your authors can be entered in the journal's workflow settings. So from your settings uh, workflow, there's going to be in the submission tab a separate sub tab for your author guidelines um, here you can input um, information such as your templates formatting instructions uh, definition of authorship would be important um, as well as fees if that is applicable um, again if there, if you're going to convey a lot of information for your authors here uh, we do recommend utilizing headers to keep the information organized um, and then moving on to best practices, um, in addition to meeting the requirements for indexing in the DOAJ, it's important to note that there is a set of best practices that the DO DOAJ encourages folks to consider for their journal. However, these practices do not have a bearing on whether your journal will be indexed. Within the application, you'll be asked about your archiving and repositories repository policy, as well as persistent identifiers used by the journal. All right, so up here I have an example of a journal that is accepted into the DOJ um, in the preservation policy that they have chosen to display in their OJS website. Um, finally, um, OJS does offer the following integrations for these using these plugins uh, that will allow you to display various persistent identifiers, which, as you may already know, are long lasting references to digital resources. The ORCID plugin um, helps to ensure that authors and researchers can ensure that their work is properly and thoroughly credited. Whereas the ROR plugin um, available on OJS and OPS um, enables authors to find and add the organization that they are affiliated with uh, from the list of organizations. And last, we have the DOA, sorry, DOI plugin, uh, which assigns these long lasting references uh, to objects, including journals, uh, journal issues, journal articles, and supplementary files. Um, and then for those that are interested, we do have a list of our resources, um, which we've mentioned throughout our presentation. Um, so these will be the best practices guide, DOAJ application, um, Docs Hub, as well as our support forum. 
Um, and for those that want to take a look um, in more detail of the journals that we highlighted in our presentation, um, these will be the titles um, and then the direct links, oh, sorry, uh, for those um, for further um, details. Um, and then I'm gonna turn it back to Arush um, to let you know about our next event. Thank you so much. So as a follow-up to this webinar, PKP will host a panel discussion moderated by the DOAJ's Judith Barnsby on the 28th of June at 8 a.m. Pacific time. Panelists will be made up of journal, journal editorial boards as well as librarians who support publishing and institutions who support open publishing. Um, and essentially panelists will share their experiences as they applied and were indexed by the DOHA. So this will include sort of, you know, the, the things that went well, the things that took a little more time and consideration. And so we really expect this to be sort of the follow-up to this webinar. Um, so while you're in the process and you're starting with the process and you wanna hear about people's experiences as they've gone through it, please do join us for, for that webinar. Um, and information about that will go out after, after this, um, along with the slides and the recording for this presentation. But now I, I will open the floor up to questions you may post in the chat and I'll try and facilitate questions to Patricia or feel free to un unmute yourselves and ask, ask us directly. Okay, hey, so a few questions have come in through the chat. Um, thank you for demystifying the process. And Igor, to your question, there's more information about that directly on the DOHA's website. Um, I can link it to you, just a moment. So I'm taking this directly from the guide to apply. Regarding the specifics around how it's evaluated, I would not have the answer to that as someone who's uh, not from the DOAJ. But what I can do, Igor, is if you send the, um, the hosts the, a direct email address, I will follow up with you on that question. Oh, Patricia, I just see that you beat me to it. What am I doing? Okay, I see that there's a follow up question about the calculation again, and whether or not it includes the people um, 
as editors? I, I don't have the answer to that question. Patricia, would you happen to have a sense of this or is it something I can follow up with afterwards? Um, I think that question might be better um, answered by someone from DOAJ. So we'd definitely be happy to follow up if you can provide um, your email um, directly, directly to Arouge or I, we'd be happy to get help get the answers for that. Thank you very much. I don't, I don't think we're going to fail the criteria, but I just wanted to make sure I know how it's being assessed. There's a question about whether or not open peer review um, would count towards the DOAJ requirements. Sorry. Sure. I'm um, sorry. Um, I, it'd be, be great to get some clarification on how you're defining open peer review. Is that just um, that the authors and reviewer identity is known to each other or um, what we're seeing with, um, I believe it's F, the F1000 journal where you are publishing um, the comments um, and decisions um by the reviewers i believe either way i don't think um just looking at the doaj best practices that this would restrict you from being indexed um it there is just the requirement of having a quality control system so a formal peer review um and a outline or some somewhere that outlines kind of the details of your peer review process um and the minimum requirement of having at least two independent reviewers for each um, art, each article. When do you recommend to use a single static page instead of putting all necessary information in the about text box, Patricia? Um, yeah, so I think that's just a matter of how much text you want to display and how you want to display it. Um, again, if you are choosing to do the text box, um, then I would recommend using headers. But if you want to split it, split it up into specific pages, um, that is also welcomed as well. So I'm just going to pop open uh, one of the, the journals that um, I've highlighted, um, and they've chosen to um, display their policies as in specific pages rather than in the single text boxes, which is also um, an option. I think the main requirement is that your content um, is easily um, searchable and clear um, and can be easily navigated. So this is the physical education and sports studies and research, as you can see here, they've decided to have kind of a specific menu tab for their policies um, and breaking it out into specific kind of areas, their archiving, publication ethics, um, open access statement, uh, plagiarism policy. Um, so that is one option of how to do that. Uh, whereas other journals may choose to do it um, in their about the journal page, uh, use it, this one's utilizing headings. Um, for example, if you are looking to display a lot of text, there's also the option if you um, are able to and, um, and have kind of the CSS knowledge 
uh, to utilize things like a um, hamburger menu, as you can see here, um, to e allow users to easily navigate those content. Thanks, Patricia. There was a follow-up question to the one about um, the open peer review, and there were specifics given about wanting to use OPS as a manuscript server and add to the preprint the comments of the evaluation. Um, Patricia, I don't want to speak for you, but I don't have the answer to this particular question, uh, and I'd be happy to follow up with the attendee if you also don't have the, uh, the answer. Yeah, I don't have the answer to that one right now, so it'd be great to follow up. Um, so just please send us your email and we'd be happy to look into that further. Another question came in about the OAI of an OJS journal and whether or not um, we can evaluate if, if it meets the requirements. Patricia, would you happen to know anything about this? Um, I don't, but taking a look at like DOAJ's uh, documentation, it looks like they use OAI-PMH, um, which is what um, OJS um, offers as well. Um, and in terms of transferring or sending your content um, to DOAJ, it, it, once you are accepted, um, there is a plugin, um, I believe, available on most versions of OJS that would facilitate um, the registry or deposit um, of your articles um, into DOAJ. Those that registered for this event, you will receive a follow-up with information about how to access the recording, the slides, um, and resources that we mentioned along with our next event. We will also follow up with those who asked specific questions, which we um, were unable to, to answer. And we'll stick around for a few more moments to, to take any remaining questions that you may have. Thank you all for taking time out of your day and attending this webinar. We really enjoyed having you here. Um, and we'll stick around for, for another moment.